A few years ago, when I knew even less about making videos than I know now, I made a video about my favorite thing, which at that time was this JVC KY210 broadcast camera. It's not hard to see why this was my favorite thing. I mean, it looks like a Japanese sports car from the 80s. It's just beautiful. I mean, aesthetically, it hits every possible base. But in addition to that, as far as I can tell, it seems to be an extremely well-made tool. Its one purpose in the world is to shoot live video, and that's the only thing it does, and it's probably built better than it really has to be for that purpose. I mean, every single part of this is aluminum, magnesium, steel, even parts that don't really need to be. It's just overbuilt, and it looks great, and I don't really have any use for it. Like, I love it, and I'm interested in video cameras notionally, but I don't do this, I don't shoot standard definition live video. So this thing was my favorite thing just as a curiosity, as something that, as far as I could tell, was built as well as it possibly could be. Oddly, in the three or four years since I made that video, I never really crowned a replacement for this, even though I've gotten all sorts of cool stuff that I really like and that serves much more of a purpose for me, I never really picked anything up and went, this is my favorite thing that I own, until recently. Friendship ended with JVC KY210. Sony DSR50 is my new best friend. And unlike the camera, I'm not sure this will ever be deposed because it solves an actual problem I have better than anything else I'm aware of past or present. So let's get this out of the way in a few words. It's a portable standard definition digital videotape recorder. If that doesn't interest you, stick around anyway, because like the JVC, even if you have no use for it, it's built the way things should be. It's just a delightful device and one that serves a purpose, at least for me. In a global sense, this is not the best videotape recorder or portable videotape recorder or the best way to record standard definition video, but for me, it is all those things because it meets my needs, my desires, my aesthetics, my philosophy better than anything else. I have found. There are things I wish it could do better or do at all, but this is the local maximum. Now we would call this a VCR, but the industry calls them VTRs or videotape recorders for reasons. This takes the DV cam format, which is uh, one of these tapes right here. Now internally, this is very similar to mini DV, which you might be familiar with from consumer camcorders. In fact, they're nearly identical. We'll talk a little more about that later. Now this is a digital format, so whatever you put into this deck, it's gonna lay down on tape as a digital bit stream, like an MPEG file with a different codec. Later on, you can hook this deck up to your PC or to another recorder via Firewire and get a perfect lossless digital copy of your footage. Now, there were lots of DV cam decks when this thing hit the market in 02 or 03, I think, uh, but none of them were built like the bombs were about to fall. This one is made almost entirely of magnesium, the handle here. Uh, Sony calls this a go anywhere VTR in their brochure and I'm inclined to agree. It kind of feels like you could throw it off the top of a building quite a few times before it noticed. You do pay a little bit, you know, it weighs just under nine pounds, but it's got this nice comfortable handle on here. And if you really get tired of carrying it, it also has strap lugs, which is a great place to segue into why this thing is perfect for me. First, the lugs themselves. I've talked before about how the video and film production industries have these wonderful de facto standards that everything supports. Uh, for instance, the four pin XLR power, like you see here, that's on pretty much everything in a modern production environment. Well, these strap lugs are on pretty much everything as well. All of my pro cameras have the exact same ones here and here. This is a Sony, but I have JVCs and Panasonics that have the same thing. And the strap for it, it's one of my favorites. Just take this guy here, put it on there, and pull, and you're ready to go. It's a really quick system. I've never seen one of these things broken. They certainly seem strong to me, and they're supported by everything, so you only need one or two of these straps for your entire inventory of gear. I love it. I love these things so much, I wish everything had them. I wish my phone had these. But besides just being cool, they also make this device properly portable, which is the reason I got it in the first place. See, I've been collecting standard definition cameras for many years. Of course, they don't show up in my videos very often, which is partially because I've been unable to find a reliable way to capture video from any of my cameras. They often have broken recorders or they don't have recorders at all. So the only place I can really use them is, well, in here. And how many shots from inside the studio do you really wanna see? 
For years, I've been looking for a good way to capture standard definition video without being tethered to a computer. There's virtually nothing out there that can do it, and it's made even harder because every time you bring up this subject, people just dismiss it with all these justs. I consider just to be a four letter word. If your idea begins with that, you're probably not bringing anything to the table, and it's probably not as straightforward as you think it is. And indeed, the two suggestions I usually get are either to use a portable HDMI capture device and an upscaler, or to use a USB capture card plugged into my phone. And indeed, both of those solutions work if you're a masochist. However, if you're trying to actually get something done rather than just dicking around, toting around a big wad of patch cables, couplers, USB batteries, and a smartphone with a big adapter hanging out the side of it is absurd. To put it as kindly as possible, I'm a professional and I don't have time for that Mickey Mouse horse shit. I've done it and it worked until something came loose, which happened almost immediately and then I had to stop what I was doing. That is, stop producing a work product and dick around with computer nonsense, which is always a negative sum game. Every extra connection is a failure point. And sure, when you're at home just messing around, who cares? You don't have the right cables, let's get some adapters and couplers and shove things together. And you know, if the video cuts out, you'll just jiggle all the cables until it starts working again. But when you're trying to actually get some video recorded, for a purpose, you don't have time for any of that. You're supposed to be running the camera, not worrying about whether your video is actually making it to the recorder. And frankly, even if you're not doing it for work like me, you owe yourself a little more self-respect than that. So what is needed for proper field recording is very specific. You need a self-contained device that plugs into a camera with at most one passive adapter. It has to record in the native format of the camera so you don't have any loss from conversion. And it has to be able to prove that it's recording both on the fly and after the fact so you can verify that you have your footage before you head home. This is that product and I've searched long and hard enough to tell you that there really isn't anything else that can do it all. There are things that hit some of the bases, but nothing that hits all of them, except the DSR-50. Just for an example, uh, the smartphone solution does give you a live preview and solid state recording, but it's super awkward. You got all these extra adapters, so it's not self-contained. Uh, there are some consumer portable video recorders out there, but they're all AliExpress sludge. They're not made by any actual professional video companies. They're clearly not intended for portable use, and they obviously have connectors that are gonna be super flaky. In the pro market, there were a couple uh, like portable laptop styled recorders from Panasonic and I think Sony, uh, but some of those wouldn't even run off of battery, and they're clearly not intended to actually be carried around. Panasonic did make this little tiny recorder with a built-in screen. I get excited every time I come across it, but then I remember that it only records digital SDI video, so it doesn't take any analog inputs. And there's lots of stuff that'll record digital SDI video now, so it seems like the pro market did get excited about portable video recorders, but only after they transitioned largely away from analog. There were also a couple of portable DV recorders like the uh, Focus Enhancements Firestore, and this uh, little Sony compact flash recorder. These are very cool and I'm gonna talk about how I actually use them in my workflow, but they don't solve the problem because they don't take analog video directly, only Firewire, and they don't have any built-in preview screens. So as far as I can tell, that's pretty much it. I've been over everything and nothing hits all the bases, except this. See, first off, it's not a life hack. It's not some stationary unit that I've stuffed in a backpack with a USB power bank and an inverter. This is meant to be portable. So it's got the strap lugs and the handle. It also runs off of battery, the same V-mount batteries that most other studio gear does. So it is self-contained. It's got your power, your storage, your portability designed into it. The only thing you have to supply is the video and audio. The side offers a bewildering variety of inputs and outputs. Uh, you've got basic composite and S-video input. Uh, if you've got a compatible camera or adapter, you can use component input. Uh, it's got Firewire if you have a DV-capable device. Uh, and then the four XLRs over here give you four channels of high bitrate audio, and they support phantom power. I like thinking about this thing in its heyday being used for like a, an entire sports commentary table because you really just need this guy, a battery, a camera, and four mics. That would be your entire rig, no external equipment. Most of the other stuff over here are outputs. So you've got composite and S-video again, direct component. You can also of course plug into the Firewire jack to get a digital copy. And then it's got time code for syncing to another deck, which I don't remotely understand. So this looks like a dizzying array of connections, but it's just a fancy VCR. You just plug in to the composite or whatever and away you go. 
to be sure, Sony probably intended for you to use this with their cameras, with their semi-proprietary 26-pin connector that communicates all the audio, video, and control signals with the camera all in one cable. It's certainly more convenient that way, but nothing stops you from just slamming a single composite cable on the side, and that's what I do with this thing. So here's how I might use this. Um, I've got audio and video cables taped together here, and on this side, I'm gonna connect the audio first channel, uh, video into the video input, and then on the camera, I'll do the same. Now I can put this over my shoulder, and this guy over the other shoulder, and there it is. That's the system. Works just fine. I can record up to two hours of video on this thing before I have to swap tapes. Uh, in fact, batteries are the bigger problem, especially for the camera. Powering a lot of older cameras that don't take modern batteries is a huge pain. I don't have a good solution for that, but the rest of it's taken care of. Now I can use it this way, or if I've got somebody assisting me, I could have them take care of that while I run the camera like a machine gunner and loader. But there's actually a much more absurd way of using this, which is how I've mostly been using it. Instead of slinging it over my shoulder, sling it across my chest. And now, shoulder the camera. Now I know this looks completely absurd, but believe it or not, I have gone out and recorded like this and I didn't even get a wedgie. Don't get me wrong, it's awkward, it's cramped, and I look like a ghostbuster, but the alternative is being tied down to a card table by like 25 feet of cable that people can trip over or dragging some card around behind you. I mean, if I just want to walk around with a camera, this is the closest I can get. And it's not actually all that bad. The weight is spread better than you'd think. And despite being all the way up here, I can actually see all the displays and reach the controls fairly readily. So let's take a look at those controls. Right off the top, I love the power switch. It's an actual clunk clunk toggle switch. Call me petty, but every time I see a push button power switch on something, I just get mad. It's the wrong way to do it. These guys are on every single piece of Pro Gear I have, just your basic metal toggle switch. It's the correct way to do a power switch and everything should have one. Over here, you've got all your standard playback controls, play, pause, rewind, etc. Nothing advanced other than audio dubbing because this isn't an editing deck. This is just for recording and basic playback. All the advanced jog, shuttle, and insert editing controls, that's for the deck back at the studio. You got your mic levels here, or you can just leave them all on automatic. This here is the tape slot. Now, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this sort of thing before, but this deck actually takes two different formats. See, I mentioned earlier that it takes DV cam, it's this stuff right here. But, I mentioned that this is very similar to mini DV tape from the consumer world. Well, in fact, they're pretty much the same thing and there's a mini DV cam as well and this deck will take it. Okay, big question, why? Well, these tapes are actually very, very similar, almost the same. The main difference is in how they're used. DV cam stores a very similar signal to DV, except it runs the tape about twice as fast. So while this gets 60 minutes of footage in a consumer camcorder, this one only gets about 40 and some are even shorter. Now, mini DV was actually the small version of a full-size format called DV, which looked just like this. There wasn't much consumer gear that ever used this, but the pro market had lots of use for it because you can get a lot more tape in there. So this gets it back up to two hours of footage, even at that doubled speed. So these are great for editing because you could put two hours of high quality digital footage on them, but a lot of camcorders still aren't big enough to take these tapes. But then when you get back to the studio, what, are you gonna have two completely different sets of editing decks, one for little tapes, one for big? doesn't make any sense. So instead, all DV cam decks that I'm aware of will take both sizes of tape. And in fact, there's even some that'll take more than two sizes, but that's for another video. Besides that, you got your basic information display. It's got a backlight. There's a time code control, whatever. Over here, this is what I really brought you here for. This is one of the rarest features in any device of its type. This actually has a built-in preview display, and there's very little of this era or earlier that offers anything like this. It started showing up in the later like digital beta cam decks and whatnot, but it just wasn't a thing back then. Normally this shows us the current input, so composite, DV, S-video, etc. But if I press the play button here, it also acts as a monitor for the tape. 
So this is the complete solution. Not only does it let me verify that I'm capturing video while I'm capturing it, but after the fact, I can rewind the tape, hit play, and actually watch it right here on the deck to make sure I got everything before I leave the location. It's also not a bad display. It's got pretty good color rendering. It's updating at 60 frames per second, and it's actually bright enough that you can see it in all but the strongest sunlight. So it's suitable for use outdoors, which is exactly where you'd want to use it. It also has the VU meters, so if I have a mic plugged in, I can verify that I'm getting audio. So when I sling this thing across my chest like I showed you earlier, I'm not just getting access to the controls, but to the viewfinder to see if this is really capturing anything. Uh, let me show you what that actually looks like to use. I took some GoPro footage earlier. This is me walking around town just shooting some video with this whole rig. And I can glance down at any moment, see if there's a picture coming in, check my levels, and if I slide it over a little and, and lift it a bit, I can get a pretty clear look at what it's capturing. In fact, I could even use this as an off-camera monitor. So for instance, right here, I'm holding the camera down at ground level, but I can see what it's getting without needing to somehow get my eye down to the viewfinder directly. I'm using a Sony DSR250 camera, which you saw on my shoulder earlier in this video, and I think this is more or less contemporary with this videotape recorder. It actually records on DV cam itself, so this whole setup is redundant, but it's the lightest weight camera I have, and it produces a pretty good picture, so I just grabbed it. Now, the video I'm capturing is nothing special since I was really focusing on the deck itself, but here's what it looks like. I'm capturing this over a simple composite cable and there wasn't great light that day, so the picture's a little dingy, but you can tell this VTR has a pretty good digitizer. And for composite, the quality is not half bad. It's more than watchable. I could upgrade this by using S-Video or even Firewire since this camera has DV out, but the composite makes the point that I can capture anything with a standard video output in reasonable quality, which was the point of this whole venture. So this does exactly what I wanted. It lets me add a high quality digital recorder to any camera, whether it has a broken deck or a crappy deck or no built-in recording capability at all. As long as I can plug it into this thing, I can get the best possible quality out of that camera. But there are still some issues. Namely, it still records on videotape, which means I still have to get the video off the tape somehow, and that process always sucks. I have made some inroads, but it should be as simple as just plugging the FireWire port into my PC, clicking play, and clicking record, but I've had no end of trouble with it. Microsoft broke FireWire support in Windows 10 years ago, maybe Windows 8 as well. I had a Windows XP laptop with FireWire, but Premiere just kept crashing on that. I have a MacBook with FireWire, but iMovie HD keeps crashing, and when it does work, it saves the DV files in a really boneheaded way. So I just haven't found a good PC workflow for this. This brings us back to DV recorders. This is a Focus Enhancements Firestore FS4. Uh, this was sent to me by a very kind viewer, otherwise I would have a hard time getting one. They're expensive and rare. This is basically a 40 gig hard drive married to a battery with a FireWire port. I can plug this into that, hit play, hit record, and I'll get a DV file on here with all my video. Trouble is, the only input and output it has is FireWire, so I still have to plug it into an old PC to get the data off, and then it only moves at old laptop hard drive speeds. So this worked, but I still wasn't super happy. However, another kind viewer sent me this Sony HVR Z7U, an early HD camcorder from 2008, and while that seems irrelevant to the video, we'll get there. This thing is actually interesting in its own right and deserves a moment of screen time because it's from an era that I, I think most people don't know about. It shoots 1080i video, so full HD, but it records it on mini DV tape. Nothing special, just ordinary mini DV. They just used a new codec that allows them to store a full 1080i image in the exact same data rate. Uh, this is called HDV, and you could actually buy a number of consumer camcorders in uh, the mid to late 2000s that recorded on this. My understanding is it was fairly popular for amateur videography. This is a kind of a prosumer type camcorder. I don't know how much it cost originally, but it's actually got interchangeable lenses. So fairly expensive, I'm guessing. Here's some footage from this camera that I shot yesterday, and right away you can see it's considerably better than standard def. I mean, let's be honest, it's phenomenal, really. I mean, this is coming off of a tape. This is definitely the highest quality picture any consumer ever could have gotten off of a videotape medium, hands down. But even so, you might be thinking that it still looks a little soft for HD video, and you'd be right. This camera is, again, from about 2008, and at that time, there were a number of cameras being sold that output 1080i videos 
from significantly lower resolution sensors. I don't know exactly what the resolution in this one is, but well, 1920 by 1080 is about two megapixels, and Sony lists this sensor as only about one megapixel, so shenanigans are afoot. I know of one other camera from 2006 that outputs 1080 with a sensor that's less than 700 pixels in either dimension. My guess is that at this time, it just cost an unholy fortune to get a true full HD sensor. I mean, I don't know what you had to spend, but even my beastly Sony XD cam, which must have been close to five digits, only has a 1440 by 1080 sensor. All the same, the HDB from this little Sony is still miles ahead of any standard definition picture. So it's not like it was total fraud, it's just not quite the improvement you might have hoped for when you saw that 1080 on the box. Okay, but really, how is this relevant? Well, in addition to being a wacky HD videotape camera, it's also dual format. This records on two different media, mini DV or with the addition of an accessory, compact flash. I showed you this earlier. This is the HVR MRC1. It accepts a compact flash card and then it has this little proboscis on the back, which mates into the back of the camera. And now they're one unit. The mini DV deck is now irrelevant, forget it. It was a mistake made during manufacturing. This is the finished device. This receives a DV signal from the camera, and uh, when I press the record button, it tells this to start recording. So now this is just a solid state camera that records on compact flash. Since when you're done, you can just pop this CF card into your PC and read your video at much faster than real time speeds, it's obviously a huge upgrade for this camera, but it's also why it's essential for my workflow. This is an accessory for the camera, but it also works as a standalone unit with this sled, which gives it a Firewire port, and then it takes a standard Sony NPF infolithium. So forget the camcorder, we now have the most compact Firewire recorder on the planet. I love this thing. Rather than using a computer with flaky software, I can just assemble this thing and then we plug a Firewire cable in here, plug the other end into the deck, and this is my video ingest workflow. I just press play here, press record there, and it's one compact little unit. It's not ideal, but man, it's so close to being ideal. It's still videotape, so transferring an hour of footage takes an hour, and I have to baby it. Occasionally, this will reach the end of a clip and decide to just stop recording completely, so I have to watch this little tiny screen and make sure it's still going. But you know, those are just irritations, and they're during the non-critical phase of the process. The important thing is that I get the video recorded in the first place. If it takes me five tries to rip it at home, who cares? But if my system fails in the field, I lose footage I can maybe never get again. And this has not let me down yet. So it's a reasonable trade. Despite not being perfect, this is still my new favorite thing, and I think it will be for a long time, even if it gets replaced by something that does the job better. I don't think that's likely. No one seems to care to solve this problem. I keep wishing that someone would take the open source scan converter and turn it into just such a device. It already takes a lot of analog formats and converts them into digital video pretty well. And if someone added a video encoder and a preview screen, I'd buy six of them, but I'm not holding my breath. And this setup pretty much works perfectly for me other than the slowness. Just like my previous favorite thing, it's not gonna show up in my videos all that often. I always thought I'd be doing more videos about camcorders and whatnot, but of course people have shown a lot more interest in my other hobbies. And besides, it's a lot easier to show off a computer device or a gadget of some kind than a video camera that just, you know, takes video poorly. But any videos I put out that are about camcorders are definitely gonna involve this thing. I already used it for the Hitachi MPEG cam video and the one about the Sony Minidisc camera. I'm sure I'll get plenty of use out of this, but even if it had no practical purpose in my life, like the JVC camera before it, it would still be my favorite thing because I just can't see any way they could have designed it better. Pretty much everything I see has some boneheaded design flaw, something obviously wrong that makes me roll my eyes at the people who made it, but this just gets it all right. It's built like a shit brick house. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It feels great to touch and carry and use. It has simply failed to disappoint me no matter how hard I have tried to be disappointed. If I had a big marble plinth to set it on to gaze down on all the other devices and shame them, that's where I would put it. But even for this device, that's all the hyperbole I can muster. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, consider subscribing so I know you like this sort of thing. Remember to turn on notifications if you wanna find out when I have a new video. 
And if you really enjoyed this, consider supporting me on Patreon like these folks here are doing. It costs quite a bit to get all this stuff and the space to show it to you in, so I'm really grateful to all of them for supporting me. And to everyone else, thanks for watching.